Today on the channel, new ground is broken as we go off to a mystical and magical land of dungeons and dragons. The here and welcome back to the channel for another Dungeons and Dragons unboxing and review and today we got a little two-pack action in Vangar and the Dungeon Master but for all your Dungeons and Dragons needs and a whole lot more make sure you're hitting up Entertainment Earth use discount code Kyle save yourself 10% on all in-stock items anything over $59 does ship free got to get the deal out there as we do know and of course we're gonna do this review like we do all the other ones here on the channel we're gonna take a look at the packaging we're gonna talk about it we're gonna unbox it we're gonna talk about it we're going to see where it goes from there. A little bit of a head scratcher here is I know nothing of Dungeons and Dragons. I am the first to admit it. Only thing I know about Dungeons and Dragons is a little kid going to the toy stores and comic book shops in my local area. They'd always have that room off to the side where people were playing the Dungeons and the Dragons, the Magic of the Gatherings. And I'd always kind of look and I just had no idea what was going on. It just seemed like such a foreign, different world that I never did learn about, never did understand. And they probably looked at me the same way. So what's this guy doing looking for toys? What's he doing looking for comic books? Who knows? It is what it is. But I do like action figures, and I wanted to see what all the fuss was about here. Of course, these have really bombarded Target stores as of recently times. <clears throat> as of recent times, and this pack especially caught my eye, because you guys know I love my big figures, but I also love my little guys. And Vengar, or Dungeon Master, I assume, is the little guy here. Uh, he did catch my eye, and I did want this pack, but when I saw it, it was $49.99. First, I fell down in the aisle, then I picked myself up with a nice, kind employee that said, let me put that back on the shelf for you. You obviously can't afford this. And I said, yes, you're right. I cannot afford this at $49.99, but $24.99 on clearance? Got to get a deal. And the movie's not even out yet, as far as I know. There is a Dungeons & Dragons movie. This is based off of the old toy line, cartoon line, I should say, or cartoon series back in the day. Once again, never saw the cartoon series. So this is really foreign land for me. To me, I see a little guy and a crazy looking wizard. I can maybe smoke and mirrors these guys into some other action figure lines. And that's what it is for me. So I get it. I know some of you guys are hardcore Dungeons and Dragon experts. Uh, put that to the side a little bit as I'm just seeing this more for the action figures. And like I said, I don't know anything about the game. Never played it. Never watched the cartoon. Never really collected the figures. However, we put an asterisk by that. Of course, growing up in the 80s, there were so many toy lines. It was a glorious time to be a toy collector or a kid that played with toys, let's be honest. And I had a lot of figures in my collection that I had no idea what they were. A lot of that had to do with maybe the animated series wasn't on in my area. Of course, a lot of that stuff was in syndication. It was up to the local affiliates to choose if they wanted to play it. One that went over my head that I never knew anything about till many years later, and I still don't know anything about them, is the Silverhawks. It was never on in my area. Now, Dungeons & Dragons, I don't remember ever seeing that cartoon ever in my area. And there was others uh, around there as well, and there was toy lines for a lot of these lines that were at my local Children's Palace, Toys R Us, Target, Walmart, whatever that I'd never seen, didn't know anything about, but somehow, maybe birthday parties, maybe grandmas and uncles buying me something, whatever, I ended up with some figures. And looking back, doing a little bit of research on some things, I actually owned two Dungeons & Dragons figures as a little kid. I owned this little dwarf guy. I uh, don't know his name, don't know what he's all about, but he was a dwarf, and I did mix him into some other toy lines like one would do. I think I mixed him in with my Kenner Super Friends uh, a lot, I remember. And then I had this animal, I think it's a griffin, is that what you call these? things and I guess this was a Dungeons and Dragons figure as well. Now this Venger guy I thought I owned as a little kid but researching a little bit more I realized that it was Brave Star. Once again never saw the cartoon didn't know anything about it but I had this Brave Star overlowered character who that's who I thought was this and I also had this really cool lion-like character and I mixed him in with and Overlord in with my He-Man figures is what I did but no idea what Brave Star was still don't even know what Brave Star is uh, but I had those figures and Dungeons and Dragons was that way for me a long way to get there I had a couple of figures just didn't even know what they were about and I just kind of engulfed them into some of my other toy lines is what I did but let's take a look at the packaging on this one see what all the fuss is about here and obviously not a lot of fuss i don't know how well the movie's gonna do i don't venture myself probably watching the movie uh obviously the movie figures are out there and then we got the animated series figures from my eyes what my eyes are telling me they aren't selling so hot i don't see them moving at all 
My gut, my gut does say they will be deep clearance, and uh, that's not a good thing for Hasbro, of course, as Hasbro is really struggling with a few things right now, as we do know. But this is an interesting one. Plastic-free packaging, once again. Not a fan of that. I don't envision a swap here. I don't know if there's enough popularity to have a swap, but we'll see. We'll see if we get one. Uh, but we got Vengar and the Dungeon Master here. I have to assume Vengar is the big bad guy and the Dungeon Master. I mean, they named the game after him, Dungeons & Dragons. So he's got to be a big deal in the game. I would have to think. But you got those two. A little twofer pack. I don't know if it really feels like a twofer pack. We're going to find out because uh, little guys, a lot of times, they feel like an accessory. But we got good artwork here, a lot of red coloring, animated style on the side. I mean, he looks evil, he looks nice, writes itself. It really does. A little QR code over there, like a young action force. Uh, look up more details, I guess. And it looks like it might come with a die. That could be interesting. And then in the back, we got all kinds of stuff. We got the cross sell. Seen those guys out there a lot. Uh, I got a little glamour shot of, I guess, the cartoon. I mean, you really don't see a whole lot. I guess this is technically the figures. Uh, it kind of is what it is. But it looks like we got a backdrop with this as well. That's interesting. We got some dice, some extra hands. Well, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what all the fuss is about here. Let's get this guy open. Let's see what's going on. See if our world is going to change here today. Uh-oh, we got all kinds of stuff. What do we got? That's it right there. To the recycling bin. See you later. Goodbye. The first thing I see here is this is pretty cool. This little backdrop action. I'm here for that. It's the land of the dungeons and the dragons. Look at that. A little mural action there going on. I wish it kind of didn't have dungeons and dragons up here because then you could maybe mix it into something else. I guess you still could. But an interesting backdrop. You don't see this very often. Uh, we see this in the NECA accessory kits uh, fairly recently. And then you get a generic background. I like this as a little throw in. This works for me. Uh, it looks like a little roller coaster ride. I think Dungeons and Dragons is a lot about an amusement park. I think they're trying to go on a ride. Or I'm sure this ride, it, it rides itself. This ride probably takes them to a faraway land and they come out of there like Land of the Lost. They're like, where am I? I was on the roller coaster. How am I in this strange world? I mean, just by the artwork, you can tell right there. Something. It's either about a day at the amusement park or they got transported into another thing with a dragon and all that fun stuff. Spider-Man style, see you later. Goodbye. And then, oh boy, the parchment paper prison. Running hard, running fast, running free like a Lando and Rio. Cardboard straight up. See you later. Goodbye. All right, let's see what's going on in here. Get these open. Oh, there it is. Interesting. Very different parchment paper than we see with Marvel Legends and G.I. Joe. See you later. Uh, a little bit sturdier, I would say. And what do we got in here? Oh, oh, it's a box inside of a box. It's an old trick right there. How about that? More parchment paper. Come on. Bam. See you later. Goodbye. Another big one. Oh, there's the figure. Got that there. Parchment paper running fast and free. Man, a lot of it. See you later. And then we got one more that was inside that one. What could it be? Oh, we got dice. Oh, we're throwing dice here today. See you later. Goodbye. All right, let's get him over to the side. Venger, I think was his name. Hopefully I'll remember that. We got the dice, we got some accessories, and then we got the little guy here, the Dungeon Master. Okay, playing all the hits, some might say. But let's look at these accessories first, and I guess we'll look at these dice. And this dice is absolutely crazy. I have no idea how this even works. Dice is weird. I'm used to the more traditional dice, and you always hear about the like crazy dice in all these games, these crazy board games that people are playing. It's very inventive. I just don't get it. I guess it's just dice with more sides to it. I mean, is there anything more that I'm missing with this dice? I've never understood. I'm trying to understand how this works. You just roll it, and I guess it's whatever is on top. So I got a 16 in this example. So I guess that's how it works. I don't know if it matters what color the dice is. You know, you've got different colors on here. But I guess if you're into this thing, I don't know if this involves the figures. I didn't see a game to play, so I don't know if you just take this back with your Dungeons & Dragons and incorporate it. I don't know. Somebody clue me in, and then you get this little, like, spinner top dice. I don't know. It's just interesting. we got two different dices here, and I know dice, you must roll and, and do adventures. Once again, I don't know. Is this a cool throwaway gift in here? Is this a cool accessory? You guys tell me. Now we get some extra hands for this Venger guy, and I like what they're doing here. I wish we saw more hand combinations like this. A lot of times you get two fists, two gripping hands. Well, why can't I get a fist, a gripping hand, a splayed out hand, and a, you know, a crazy hand, a, an effect hand? And they do that here. They give us a crazy hand, 
a fist, and then we do get two uh, effect hands here. So I do like that. I don't think these effects are removable. They are not. They stay in there. But it does give us a little bit of choice, a little bit of choose your own adventure right here with this finger guy. But cool effect pieces, different than Marvel, different than anything else. It is its own thing, so we do have that. Then we get down to this Vanger guy. It looks like he's got these big old bat wings. Very hard plastic on these. Got the red and black attack going on. Plugs into his back, I do assume. But looking nice. I like what I see here. And then I guess, yep, he's got a big hole in his back. You just plug these bad boys in. And hopefully, oh, you got to really work it. Uh-oh, just lost something. Oh, he's got more. Oh, my gosh, what are we doing here? We got more parchment paper up inside, inside of him. It's up inside his skirt. See you later. Goodbye. What are we doing there? That's an interesting way. And we got little pieces going around as well. All right, well, we got this plugged into his back, so now we get Venger, the whole thing. And I don't know about you guys, this guy doesn't scare me a whole lot. Did he lose one of his horns in battle? Uh, I like the wings on him, but I don't know about this big flowing skirt that he's got going on here. I mean, he was maybe very fashion forward for the time, but not as intimidating as I would imagine. He's got a little bit of fangs going on. He's got a blue face, like a grown-up smurf that went wrong. Uh, maybe he's got a little of that going there. Uh, interesting, he's only got one horn, though. I wonder if there's more to the story there. I would I would think there is, possibly. Got a nice kind of cowl over there. The wings are really the money feature on him, if you ask me. Uh, he does have two hands. He does got legs underneath. How about that? But I'm not sure why he even has legs. You can't really see him. This doesn't really fold up so well, but he does have legs underneath there. To me, why not just have him like a traffic cone? Because his legs aren't really used for anything. Uh, he's just standing on his skirt. And I think that does work for uh, most people, I would imagine. He does got a peg hole on the bottom, but I was going to say, does he fit on a ringside stand? But you wouldn't even be able to put him on a stand because of the skirt on there. So doesn't make a lot of sense. You do have articulation, but once again articulation for what you bend the knee it doesn't go anywhere there's nothing you can do this doesn't bend out of the way so very weird it's like they spent more money when they didn't have to spend money if they could have took the articulation or took the legs totally away on this figure you could have saved some money towards the full price of this wouldn't have to be 49.99 it could be maybe 39.99 or whatever it may be I don't know just very interesting there uh, the marketing strategy on this one now he does got arms and we do got no bicep cut, looks like single jointed elbows, single jointed elbows, and you get the back and forth side to side, very Super 7-like, hands removable, hands back and forth, head, a little bit of movement there, but pretty much limited, uh, and it does get a little bit of hula hoop action going on, so you do have that, but really limited in the articulation department, I mean, really, honestly, he almost feels more of a statue than an action figure to me, and even his arms, you put a bend to him, you do get limited by this big shawl that does move out of the way a little bit, but not enough, and it is hard plastic uh, for these kind of things, it's not a really soft, gummy plastic, it's more of a, a hard plastic, so... Very interesting there. I'm not sure what to really think of this guy. To me, I'll probably use the effect pieces just to make him a little bit different. But I can't say this is a slam dunk. That is for sure. Definitely an interesting one. So an interesting figure, an interesting dice. Now we get down to the little guy. And I guess he's the dungeon master. And I'm sure he's just a little friendly guy. And he welcomes everybody to the land of the Dungeons and Dragons. And tries to guide them on their quest. I mean, it writes itself, these things. They all kind of go together. Uh, but once again, this is not a figure. This is a, an accessory is what this is. He's no leg articulation. He's just a solid piece of of plastic right here he's got some feet here but they don't move don't do anything he does have arms but barely move once again you get just kind of around and round no elbow articulation you get a twist at the hands and then he's got a little crazy finger pointing hand like he's pointing in that direction go that way uh that's what we have here and then he has a gripping hand over here you do get a little side to side and all around but really no articulation and then the head Nothing. He's got the long hair going on. Really bringing the Hulk, Hulk Hogan haircut to the next level here. He's got the big skull going on, and then look at that long hair on the end. That's an interesting look. Only a dungeon master could really uh, land home here. But he's got some kind of medallion going on, some, some kind of ceremonial robe going on. But at the end of the day, I am not signing off that this is a figure. This is an accessory. This is an add-on. And I have to assume, like I said, these are the two bad guys. Or This is the bad guy. This is the head good guy for the game, for the show, for the animated series, whatever it may be. I'm guessing that's the way it's going to go. I don't know. I'm just confused at this. I'm confused the value on $50 for this. Somebody help me out. I don't know if anybody can. Just doesn't feel like a $50 value. I'm really struggling to see a $25 value. And I guess with inflation and everything... That seems about right. 
good accessories, this board, the dice, this guy, and then a bigger deluxe type figure, $25.99. I guess I can co-sign off. I can see him maybe doing $27, $28, dollars $29.99 even. But boy, almost double that at about a $50 price point. It seems like a heck of a stretch for me. Uh, just very interesting. But I do, I remember, have a few other Dungeons & Dragons figures. I do got the Grim Sword and the War Duke from NECA, which once again, these guys are just mixing in with my He-Man, my Mythic Legions. That's what I'm doing with these. Obviously, the quality is a heck of a lot different. More of an adult collectible than a, a kid's collectible. But you can kind of see the scaling here. We got this bad boy right here as well. So they do kind of go in the same universe. They just don't feel kind of the, the same thing, I guess is what we'll say here. As I get him to stand, remove him here. And then I did bring, just for more of a traditional scaling from Hasbro, the Star Wars Black Series, the Marvel Legend kind of style, uh, we do got Doctor Strange here. So if you want to put Doctor Strange in your Dungeons & Dragons uh, layer, you could technically do that. I don't know, though. At the end of the day, not sure. It was worth the $24.99 gamble just to see what all the fuss is about. I don't know if I would buy any of the other figures. Maybe if they were on clearance for $5, I would buy them as background characters or something like that. Maybe the long game could be there. I wouldn't be shocked this summer or maybe, maybe even after the movie, those get a pretty deep clearance. I mean, if Marvel Legends are going down to like $6.98 at Target, I would have to think these Dungeons & Dragons will be right there or below eventually. We'll see what happens. I think at the end of the day, I don't know if there is a beloved Dungeons & Dragons action figure collectors uh, like there is the Marvel Legends and Star Wars wrestling and the other things out there. And it's just very foreign. And I'm sure there's people that are just like me out there uh, that don't understand or choose not to understand whatever it may be about this line. But there is a band called Gygax out there. One of my favorite bands ever. Uh-oh. Oh, no! That's what he thinks of Dungeons & Dragons. We lost him off the table. Uh, Grim Sword, you had a you had a good run. You had a good run. But there is a band called Gygax out there. If you're into Dungeons and Dragons, I, they sing about some of that kind of stuff, and I have no idea what it's going. I think Gary Gygax wasn't he the inventor of Dungeons and Dragons, if I'm right. Uh, they sing songs about them. Check out that band if you don't know them. I think they've broken up. I don't know what's going on with them, but I'm a big fan of their music. Uh, but I can't say I'm a huge fan of this toy line. I think I prefer the NECA figures over, and if I buy any more, it'll probably be NECA unless we get some deep discounts. But I'd love to hear you guys chime in, educate me, tell me what I need to know. Keep it short, though. I just only got so much time to invest into this. You guys know how that goes. Uh, but let me know your thoughts on the Dungeons & Dragons. Did you pick up the entire wave? You play in the long game? Easy pass. Let me know in the comments down below. Of course, you made it this far. You might as well like the video. Subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell. We got videos every single day, as you guys know. We got even more over there on Patreon. Patreon, your best way to support the channel and all the content we bring. You can also support the channel at ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. Then don't forget social media. Sir Paul 64 on Twitter. Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for a little Dungeons and the Dragons, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.